South Africa is producing more medical doctors than ever before, yet there's still not enough to meet demand. The country has eight doctors for every 10,000 patients. It's less than half of the global average. It's according to the Bikisita Center for Health Journalism. Well, what is the, the solution? We're joined now by Bikisita Center for Health Journalism's Jesse Copeland. Jesse, good evening. Thanks for your time. I suppose there's no question about whether there's a shortage of doctors in South Africa, but we see it affect the public and the private sectors very differently. Hi, uh, yeah, thanks so much for having me. Um, yeah, that's exactly right. Um, you, you just mentioned that there are about eight doctors for every 10,000 people in the country. Um, but if you look at public sector hospitals and public sector clinics, that number is very different. There, there are only three doctors for every 10,000 people. Um, and by some reports, there are more like 17 and a half doctors for every 10,000 people in the private sector. So definitely uh, the, the public sector is far is hit far worse by doctor shortages and uh, things are even worse in the case of public sector hospitals in rural areas. So uh, in most districts in Limpopo, for instance, there's not even one doctor for every 10,000 people. So yeah, there's, there's definitely a shortage in public sector hospitals and particularly there's a shortage in uh, rural areas. What do we know about what's driving it? So there are two big things that are driving the problem. At the kind of national level, and particularly in urban places, the thing that's driving it is a shortage of funds. So uh, we are, as you said at the beginning, uh, producing a lot of doctors. We're producing more doctors than ever before. Medical schools are, are pumping out medical graduates. But we don't have the available funds uh, to appoint them all. So we're sitting with vacancies uh, of about 20% for doctors at clinics, at government clinics. And there's a vacancy rate of about 14% uh, for doctors at government hospitals. And, you know, we've, we've got the doctors available to fill those posts, but the, the government doesn't have the funds to, to fill them. The second big thing is the rural problem. And in that case, that has to do not just with funds, but with the fact that um, most doctors don't want to go to, to rural places. Uh, there was one analysis that suggested that only about 3% of medical graduates end up working in rural areas in the long term, 10 to 20 years after graduating. Mm. Um, so th those are the two big problems. How do you think that this problem can be solved, particularly when we look at uh, you know, rural areas, because that's where the greatest need is? Uh, is the solution to have criteria that specifically takes in uh, mostly applicants from rural areas? Uh, maybe they might not be as reluctant as others to go back to their hometowns? Yeah, that's exactly right. I mean, when you think about what kind of, uh, who, who would um, go to work as a doctor in a rural area, um, it's probably going to be someone who is from that. Uh, rural area. They're the people who have um, ties to the area. They're, they're the people who have friends and family members and social ties to the community there. And so you'd expect that, um, you know, if you, uh, that, that, that uh, rural students would be more likely to go back to rural places. And actually, that's exactly what research shows. Research uh, globally and in South Africa finds that rural students are much more likely than uh, students from urban areas to go work in rural hospitals after they've um, finished their, their training. Um, and so, you know, one big solution to the rural doctor shortage would be for medical schools to admit uh, more rural students. All right, let's leave it there for tonight. Jesse Copeland is with the Biggest Center for Healthcare Journalism.